From Bunchlone Country, this is the Summer Homily Series with Bishop Greg Homing. As John stood with two of his disciples, Jesus passed, and John stared hard at him and said, Look, there's the Lamb of God. Hearing this, the two disciples followed Jesus. Jesus turned round, saw them following, and said, What do you want? They answered, Rabbi, which means teacher, where do you live? Come and see, he replied. So they went and saw where he lived, and stayed with him the rest of that day. It was about the tenth hour. One of these two who became followers of Jesus after hearing what John had said was Andrew, brother of Simon Peter. Early the next morning, Andrew met his brother and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means the Christ. And he took Simon to Jesus. Jesus looked hard at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, meaning rock. I can still remember back in 1985 when I did the strange thing of joining the Carmelites. And I thought, well, I know that I have to give this a go, but I'll probably last two months, six months at the most. So I joined in the hope that I'd get this stupid idea out of my head. I, in fact, went to have a look. I went to see. And the only way I could see was by living with the Carmelites, the Carmelite life. And sadly, after 35 years, 36 years, I'm still here looking to see what it's like. Today's gospel is the <clears throat> first major call of disciples. And unlike the calls that happen in Matthew's gospel, for example, where Matthew's at the tax collector's table and Jesus says, come follow me and <clears throat> puts on a dinner and then he follows Jesus. Or the call in Luke's gospel where St. Peter falls to his knees and says, leave me, Lord, I'm a sinner. In John's gospel, we've actually got a bit of a story. <clears throat> There's a storyline. We know where these men have come from. Andrew and the other disciple were followers of John the Baptist. So there were already <clears throat> people seeking something. They were already looking for, I suppose, the meaning of life, what to do with their own life. And they thought, we'll follow this man, the man who we just met last Sunday, <clears throat> baptizing in the Jordan. So they're with him. And I don't know what they were talking about, but John looks up and he notices Jesus walking on the horizon. And he says to his disciples, Behold the Lamb of God. No doubt he had spoken to them about whoever this person was that he spoke of as the Lamb of God, because they knew what <clears throat> John the Baptist meant. But the interesting thing is only two of his disciples go off and follow they're not following, they go off to see who this Lamb of God, who this Jesus Christ is. So Andrew <clears throat> and the other disciple go, and you can see it. They're walking, Jesus is probably there alone, and they're walking behind him, <clears throat> wondering what they're doing, which is so often the case when we want to follow something or do something significant. We're wondering what we're doing, as I was wondering when I joined the Carmelites, what on earth am I doing? So they're walking behind Jesus. And Jesus gently turns around and says, what are you looking for? Because he, in fact, knows they're looking for something. I don't know that they know <clears throat> that they're looking for something. So they answer, in the silliest answer you could give. What are you looking for? What would you answer? And their answer is, where do you live? So it's kind of like saying, what are you looking for? Oh, we're just wondering where you live, which is, of course, not what they're looking for. And Jesus very politely and very gently says, well, come and see. And they go and they spend the rest of the day with him. 
and as it turns out, the rest of their lives with him. Until we know what happens to Andrew, Andrew is martyred. <clears throat> so that's the story of the call. Now, to my mind, this is one of the most significant calls that we have in the Gospels. There are two other very significant Gospel calls. One is the call of Peter in Luke's Gospel, and the next one is at the end of John's Gospel when Jesus says to Peter at the end of the Gospel, come follow me. That's the call. But this call is interesting because, <clears throat> as happens with most of us, I think, we don't know what we're looking for. We, in fact, we know we're looking for something. And the world is made up of people looking, looking for something, searching, going here and going there. Nothing's changed. <clears throat> people look for something. They look for meaning. They look for purpose. They look for relationship. They look for another person. They seek an understanding of themselves. And this universal desire is what's happening in Andrew and the other disciple. And so they walk gingerly behind Jesus, knowing that they're looking but not knowing what they're looking for. And Jesus knows that. And he simply invites them to take the next step. Well, then come and spend some time with me. When I <clears throat> had large youth groups, and that was back in the 90s, I would say to the young adults, you don't have to believe anything that I'm saying, but try living the kind of life that I'm proposing to you. Try to live simplicity. Try to live honestly. Try to live in relationship with others and in relationship with God. Try to live a life where you have got prayer each day. And if there is something in this, you will begin to find yourself and find God. That's the power of today's gospel. They don't even know. And he says, well, come along and see. And they go and they discover. They discover themselves and they discover God. And in today's world, it's about making a choice. They could have remained at a distance looking and wondering, but they made the choice to accept the invitation in their hearts to come and see what it's like. If he had said, follow me, that would have been a bit scary. But he said, come and see. And that remains the invitation, the first invitation to anyone who was called to follow. Come and see. How do I see? Not simply by living, but by experiencing. And in the experience, you will know whether this is God. And you will know who you are. And in that experience, you will discover the way of prayer, which is the way to God. So I invite all of you this Sunday to read that wonderful passage of John's Gospel and hear the words of Jesus. Come and see. Spend time with him. Choose a way of living which accords with spending time with him and make a choice after that as whether or not you want to follow. <laughs>